pluribus unum. From many, one. That is a phrase that we can see on any coin. It offers us an extremely important challenge, particularly since we are living in an era that is enormously fractious, if not fractured. The challenge that it poses is to remain one society despite our pluralism, despite the fact that we have many differences. What I'd like to do this afternoon is to suggest to you something that is enormously important in meeting that challenge offered by e pluribus unum. I'm going to give you three relatively familiar examples. On June 18th, 2015, the day after nine African Americans were murdered in Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, tens of millions of Americans saw the following image. The flags at the Capitol in Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina, were at half staff except for one of them. That flag was the Confederate battle flag. Many Southerners see the Confederate flag as the quintessential symbol of their regional and cultural heritage. They believe that flying it is protected by their right to freedom of speech. Flying a flag is considered a speech act, as is wearing certain articles of clothing and even jewelry. On the other hand, there are those who believe that that flag is a symbol of hatred and bigotry, particularly toward African Americans. For that reason, they believe that that flag diminishes respect for our 14th Amendment right to equality under the law. A second example. Assault rifles are legal in 42 states. Assault rifles are semi-automatic military style weapons. Proponents of gun rights including the NRA, applaud this fact, arguing that the purchase and possession of such weapons is protected by their Second Amendment right to bear arms. On the opposite side of that argument, are those who think that assault rifles, for example, endanger public safety, particularly the safety of those who work in open spaces such as schools or government buildings? What they ask, to give just one hypothetical scenario, is 
would we want college students to take assault rifles to class on the day their professor handed back an exam? <clears throat> For the record, my answer is no. <laughs> Let me give you a third example. In late June of 2015, after a momentous Supreme Court case, after the decision was rendered in that case, Kim Davis, a county clerk in Rowan County, Kentucky, announced that she would not issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. As a Pentecostal Christian, she argued that her religious faith, her interpretation of the Bible, made it a sin to do so. According to her, the Bible condemns homosexuality. Proponents of same-sex marriage believe that the denial of marriage licenses to gays and lesbians is an abrogation of their right to equal protection under the laws which we typically find in the 14th Amendment. In each of these three cases, this is important, in each of these three cases, no one is denying the existence of a particular right. Whether that right is freedom of speech, religious liberty, or legal equality. Rather, the debates are over whether the exercise of one right somehow prevents the exercise of another equally valid right. This is a balancing Act. In fact, this was exactly what I referred to at the beginning of my talk when I noted there was something crucial to meeting the challenge of e pluribus unum. To phrase it differently, it is our struggle, and it is an imperative struggle to determine where one right ends and another right begins. Now, let's go back to the flag example to see how the balancing act was accomplished in that case. It turns out, as most of you know, the young man who murdered those nine individuals, was a white supremacist. He had posted photos of himself online with the Confederate flag. As most of you also know, the Confederate flag has long been a symbol of hate groups. In fact, it is regularly adopted as a symbol of new and emerging hate groups. For those reasons, the lawmakers in South Carolina decided that flying it on the grounds of the state capitol was not an appropriate exercise of free speech that that right ended 
prior to raising that flag up on the pole. They also determined that non-white citizens have a right to walk up the steps of their state capital and not be afraid or intimidated by their own government. Now, for approximately or almost 240 years, we have met the challenge of e pluribus unum. We have, on the one hand, protected the rights of individuals, but on the other hand, we have found some way to negotiate the conflicts that arise when two or more rights are in tension. To borrow the theme of the TEDx conference, I would argue here today that that is not a meager accomplishment. Rather, meeting the challenge of e pluribus unum is a big achievement. Thank you.